Hello, in this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to create a shell in C using system calls in Unix. So here is how the shell looks like. It's basically a program that either gets no command and arguments or only one command and argument specifying the default time limit uh, to wait for the child, the child when I refer to child in this um, program, I mean every single program or every single process that is going to be executed um, by the shell program because the user uh, types a command. So every time that user types a command, we need to run one process to satisfy the user. That process is called the child. The program needs to accept an infinite sequence of commands from user. Each command is either equal to quit, which means the user wants to terminate the shell, or it follows the following format. The dash T time limit is optional. If it doesn't exist, then we use the default time limit, which is the command and argument. If there is no command and argument and the default time limit is five, uh, then after that, we have the executable name for the child process, followed by the optional arguments that come after that. It can be as many as the process needs to be executed, the child process needs. Uh, then the program must react to this command by running the given executable file with the given sequence of arguments. Of course, we're going to use the fork um, system call. If the command starts with a dash t time limit, like dash t2, then the program must kill the child if the time limit is violated. So the child only has two seconds to be executed. If uh, it exceeds that limit, then the child will be terminated by the parent, which is the shell. If no time limit is given uh, in the command line, then the default value is uh, five or it's equal to the only command line argument passed to the program at the time of execution. All right, I'm going to show you the outline of the program, not all the details, but most of the program is going to be presented in this short video. First, I'm going to show you the headers, const constants, and external variables that we need. Uh, you see these includes are necessary because of the functions that I will call and the macros that I will call later. Uh, then uh, we're going to set the default time limit to five. That's what the uh, question wants. And also I need to have a PIDT placeholder for the child PID that is going to be generated um, every time the user enters a command. All right, so let's see how the main function of the shell program looks like. Uh, again, this is my uh, choice. You can choose it differently. Uh, I started by setting the default time limit to the constant, which is five. If argc is two, that means if there is one extra command and argument, then set the default time limit to the a to i of argv1, which is going to be, you know, an integer, and that integer would be the new default time limit. If it's different from five, then it's going to be a different number. Then uh, I have a placeholder for my command. One uh, K, one kilobyte is enough. Then I have an infinite while loop, while true or while one uh, that is gonna keep running as long as the user enters a new command other than the quit command. Uh, I will first print my shell so that I tell the user that they should write something, write some command. Then I use fgets to get the command from user. Uh, fgets size uh, we gets three command line, uh, three parameters: command, size of command, and the standard input um, stream. If the user enters control D, which is the end of file, then I'm going to break out of the while loop and end the program. If the user enters quit, then I have to uh, break the while loop and uh, in the shell. Otherwise, I'm going to call this function. This function, which I'll show you later, is going to execute the command uh, with this given time limit. And after that, 
execution, we're going to go back to the while loop and we keep doing this uh, as long as the user has another command to run. Here is the execute command, uh, I'm sorry, execute function, um, which as you see uh, is incomplete. Um, the first parameter is the command itself, the second parameter is an integer set to the default time limit. And then uh, I have defined some local variables like the, an area of 100 uh, arguments. The reason I choose 100 is because I assume the child is not going to have more than 100 arguments, which is a reasonable assumption. And then uh, I define the placeholder for the arc count, whatever the number of arguments is for the child. And then there's a time limit, which is initialized to the default time limit, but it may change later based on how the command looks like. The command is a string uh, array of characters, and uh, that has to determine the values of the argument, the value of the arc count, and the final value of the time limit. What you need to do is you need to tokenize the command using strtok and remember how the command for is formatted. I mentioned it in the beginning of the video. You need to update the time limit if the dash d is present in the command. Uh, and then you need to store all the arguments in the args. Of course, after you tokenize the command, um, each token is either representing the time limit or it's um, showing you uh, or it's giving you the arguments. So you've got to store all the arguments in this array of arguments. And uh, finally, store the number of arguments in the R count. Uh, don't forget to set the very last uh, args element to null. Remember, when a command line argument is uh, passed to a process, the very, very last argument should be null. That's how uh, Unix works. So uh, after you take care of that part, we say, is the R count equal to zero? That means, do we have no uh, command uh, enter or no process in the command, then you got a return because there's no uh, executable provided. Otherwise, you need to uh, create the child process to take care of uh, this command and execute the command. I'm going to show you the details of uh, the rest of execute in the following slides. All right, so in the previous slide, you saw that the execute function called uh, the, the fork system call and the child PID was returned. The child PID is negative. That means some error happened in the fork, so we're going to exit uh, immediately. Otherwise, it's going to be either zero or it's going to be a positive value. If the child PID is zero, that means the child is running this code. And otherwise, it's going to be the parent. The child has to do these three uh, lines, exec vp arg0 arg, that's going to basically replace the child uh, code section with the code section of the process that the user has specified in its command. And then if that exec vp fails, we're going to run this part and exit uh, with a um, error code. Otherwise, if you're in the parent process, you need to start the uh, time, start the timer. How do you do this? You basically call the signal and then uh, the alarm uh, with the time limit that you want. And then uh, I'll show you later how the handle alarm is implemented. It's a function that uh, is basically taking care of uh, the alarm at the end. Uh, when you set the alarm to the time limit, that means uh, the child has only uh, a bounded amount of time to finish. Then you set the, uh, then you wait for the child using wait PID, uh, child PID, and uh, you pass the status by reference. And then uh, if the child finishes, we have to cancel the alarm because if the child is terminated, we don't want to print an error message and say, for example, the child didn't, uh, or the, uh, we don't need to say the child violated the time limit. So if the child finishes, we simply cancel the alarm. How do you cancel the alarm? 
by setting the alarm to zero. Uh, that's going to override the previous alarm. So uh, after this, there's uh, an if else statement. If the child is exited without violating the alarm or violating the time limit, we simply print child process exited with the status uh, this is status, which is a macro defined um, in the included libraries. Otherwise, if it's not exited normally and it's signaled, then we say the child process terminated by its signal uh, and the signal number, which is going to be nine, I guess, when you uh, have an expired uh, alarm. And then this is the handle alarm that I mentioned earlier that was uh, passed as an input parameter of the signal as you see in the handle alarm i will simply say if the child pid is positive that means if you are in the um, parent process then um, call the kill system call to terminate the child process and then print out you know the child process timed out and was terminated here is a demo of the completed program after you complete the execute function you can run it the way I, I did, and I just say, let's run the shell with 10. That means let's set the uh, default time limit to 10 seconds instead of the original five seconds. And then uh, when I run it, it's, uh, I, I simply run different commands like ls, which lists all the files in the current directory, or, uh, and then after that, it prints child process exited with the status zero, or I will say that the, Dot case dash u dot case is a program that I have written that basically uh, changed the case of a uh, input stream and it echoes it to the output. For example, if you type apple orange with capital A capital O, the rest are lowercase, and press enter, it's gonna raise the case of all the characters and it prints capital letters uh, apple and capital letters orange, and then when you press Control D, the case program ends and then you print child process exited with a set to zero. In the next uh, line, I decided to give a good challenge to the program. I set the time limit to two seconds and I say, let's run the FIB function or FIB program uh, with uh, command and argument 55. This program, which is very easy to write, is asking, I mean, is uh, responsible for printing the first uh, 56 uh, Fibonacci numbers. Uh, why 56? Because it starts from zero all the way to 55. The total would be 56. And um, it's going to print all of the Fibonacci numbers from zero to 55. But the algorithm is very uh, naive. It uses uh, recursion and it basically, the, the body of the function basically calls the Fibonacci sequence recursively, which says Fib of n equals Fib of n minus one plus Fib of n minus two. That turns to be a very, very slow program. That's why I decided to use it to check the, to test the, the time limit um, handling of this uh, program. So as you see, uh, it had no problem printing the first 13 uh, numbers within that two second time limit. In the next slide, I will show you what happens after that. Okay, here's the rest of the output. Uh, the FIP 14, 15, all the way to FIP 41 have no problem being executed within the two second uh, time limit. But uh, if you remember, we wanted to print all the way to 55. After 41, things become very slow and uh, the child process cannot do them uh, or calculate the other Fibonacci numbers within a two second time limit. So the child process timeout uh, and was terminated. And then we say child process terminated by signal nine. If you remember, the first message um, was printed in the handle alarm function, and the second the message was printed in the execute function. And then after that, I simply say quit, and uh, that's gonna end the whole shell program, and that's pretty much the end of my demo.